everyone. So, <laughs> I just took my glasses off and now I'm kind of blind and I can't even actually tell if I'm in focus or not. Hang on, I might have to actually put my glasses back on. Am I in focus? Oh, I'm there. Am I in focus here? Oh, I don't know if I'm in focus. Hopefully I'm in focus. I'm sorry if I'm not. My eyes have just gotten so bad. Like, I think I might need to go get my eyes rechecked because these glasses, although they are a bit dirty right now. How many of you out there wear glasses? Do I have any subbies out there who have to wear glasses? I don't have to wear glasses like on my license so thank goodness it's just um, I never had an eyesight problem. I always had amazing eyesight and then um, the past couple of years I noticed, this is a bizarre start to my Mela and Me vlog isn't it? Sorry. Um, the past couple of years I just kind of noticed that my eyesight I couldn't read street signs anymore and I had to get right up close to street signs when I was driving to be able to see what they said and um, if I was at McDonald's and I was trying to order a meal from up on the board I couldn't read it anymore um, and I was just like oh my gosh my eyesight's gone bad so um, I went to my optometrist well, it would have been about two years ago now I think because uh, I've been wearing glasses for two years um, they that showed that my eyes are an oval shape, I can't remember what that's called, but they're instead of circular, they're oval, and um, I am short-sighted, I think. If you can't see distant, it means that you can see short, close-up, so I think that means short-sighted, I think. Um, yeah, so that's why I wear glasses, and normally I don't wear glasses in my vlogs because the, the, the window that I'm in front of reflects in them, and it just look, it's, it's annoying, so you can see the reflection right there, but I think I'm just going to have to wear them because my eyesight's getting just so bad. And I think it's actually pregnancy that changes my eyesight as well. And now that I've had two babies, my eyesight's just gone bang. And also the fact that I'm constantly, constantly in front of a computer editing, um, whether it be weddings or whether it be my YouTube vlogs, I'm just, I'm always in front of the computer. And sometimes the, the light will be out because Mila will be sleeping. And um, so my eyes are actually straining quite a bit. So I've probably actually ruined my own eyesight. But um, that is not the point of these vlogs. I don't even know why I got into that. Okay, so Mela is 13 weeks old. So this is um, her milestones and things for weeks 12 and 13. Because I am useless and I seem to be doing this, even though they're called weekly IVF baby vlogs or whatever I call them in the title. Um, they're actually ending up to be more like fortnightly. But, you know, I, I'm sure I'll get into a better pattern eventually. Um, anyway, so what's happened in the past two weeks, it has been an exceptionally, exceptionally stressful two weeks. Um, like so stressful that my milk supply dropped and um, we were just having a hard time. I was having meltdowns. I remember, it must have been the first week that things were happening. I remember at the end of that week ringing Stacey and I just couldn't get any words out. I just cried. I just cried and cried and cried and cried and she was like, do you want me to come over? I'm like, yeah, I, yeah, that's all I could get out. I just couldn't stop crying. And then I, um, five minutes later, I was like, okay, just calm down. I called her back and I said, look, because she lives in a different town to me. I mean, it is, uh, the towns are really close, but still. I was like, look, don't worry. I've calmed down now. I just, you know, sometimes it just feels better to cry. And she's like, okay, you sure? I said, yep. <laughs> so she got off the phone, and I got off the phone, I went in and bathed Mila, and then I could knock at the door and she turns up anyway. That's that's a good friend, you know, a friend who's just like, you tell them not to come and they turn up at your doorstep anyway. So we ended up buying Hell's Pizza and just having some pizza and just chilling out together. Um, the reason for the stress was, um, it is a really long, and there's lots of details to the story. So um, what I'm going to tell you isn't the full story, and there's a lot more to it, but the gist of it is that um, our little dog Vice um, was found roaming the streets and um, we didn't actually know that he'd been getting out. Anyway, so the Pound came to our house and basically took Vice and then realised that we were late on our registration registering our dogs and so they took Max as well. So they both took both Max and Vice to the Pound. Um, and the fee to get them both out was going to be $900. $900 is shitloads of money. Um, and we were just like, we can't afford that. And it just, Martin went and had a meeting with the head dog control people. Um, they were really um, not understanding, completely rude. Um, they were acting like they were above everybody and just, there's going to be profanity in this. They were being absolutely 
shit assholes basically they just didn't give a shit they were just like pay up or we're gonna put your dog down and then it just it, it escalated it escalated really bad to where it was gonna be like um they were blackmailing us saying you can have max which is our bigger dog if you hand vice over to us to they say to be either rehomed or sold or destroyed those are the options and i was like well clearly he's going to be destroyed i mean because they were labeling him as a menacing and vicious dog because he was found roaming the streets and apparently riling up like barking at some horses down the road or something um anyway they were basically saying that they had proof that vice was doing that so we asked for the proof and they said um oh actually no we've got no photographic evidence when they said they did and they were basically going around in circles making up stories making up lies and all we wanted was proof we're like look if you give us proof that our dog because there are lots of dogs in our street lots of dogs and lots of fox terriers um vice just happened to be the one wandering the streets that they just grabbed being incredibly large amounts of stress on us um lots of like blackmailing and this is a district council this is a council that was doing this to us and just being really horrible and mean to us and um so martin is going to be laying a formal complaint against them because a council should be a place where you go to be um talked to professionally um the guy that shook martin's hand um Martin said that he grabbed his hand really, really tight and stared him straight in the eyes, like, you know, trying to just be really menacing and cruel. And we're just like, that's not the kind of people we want to deal with in our community. And so we are laying a formal complaint against them. Um, but, yeah, it just makes me incredibly angry. Um, the good news is that we have both dogs home now, but um, we paid $900 to, well, actually, they dropped some of the fees for Max because we fought it. Um, they dropped those fees so we ended up paying 600 to get vice out um they came back from the pound they stunk they were absolutely starving and we were getting charged 20 dollars a night per dog for them to be in the pound um and i swear they weren't getting fed it was just it was a disgusting horrible 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 situation and i couldn't sleep at night i couldn't eat um and it was didn't end up being about the dogs it ended up being about just the way we were being treated by the council and it was just disgusting but anyway this is Mila's vlog so um but my milk supply dropped considerably from the stress and um it it really took its toll and at the end of those weeks I just I cried I just had to cry on the phone to Stacey and as a good friend that she is she came over and we had a bit of a just a ghoulie evening together because Martin was out having tea with someone and um it was really good so you know I really appreciate <laughs> Stacey's friendship for sure. Getting on to Mila um she I don't have any weights or anything or length like that any of that stuff right now because her um plunker appointment isn't till this Thursday as in tomorrow because I'm super super late for this vlog um she's still a very very serious serious little girl very serious little girl I do get lots of smiles out of her but she's very serious um and I remember praying that I got a child that was not as active as Roman and just hyperactive and crazy um when I was pregnant with Mila I was just like please lord I just need a child if I have another Roman I'm just going to be so grey because Roman is delightful I love him to bits but he's just so active so so active um he I don't know how he just doesn't his head hit the pillow and go to sleep at night because he just he just doesn't stop he doesn't he does not stop and so I was so glad when it was time for him to go to kindy and um you know and now Mila has turned out just as my I, I was praying and she's turned out just how I asked her to be but maybe just a little bit too serious I can't, there's no like I see the one or the other and I'm I can't get a middle ground here one extremely active child and one very serious little girl so it'll be interesting to see what kind of personality she's going to have when she gets older um you know more like Roman's age and I mean boys and girls are different as well so you know she might be a little bit more quiet because of that so Mila was waking for night feeds um I don't know if I told you but I stopped my diet because my milk supply dropped and so then my milk supply went back up and then I had all that stress so it went back down again and Mila was waking for night feeds just because she wasn't getting enough milk during the day but that is back to normal now thank goodness um her day sleeps are still a little bit iffy she does have a morning and a night uh morning and afternoon nap how long they're for is no like it, it changes from day to day so still no real 
super good routine like I had with Roman in the daytime, but she's still having two naps eventually, so um, I'm happy with that. Um, she's sleeping still through the night now that my milk supply is back to normal. Um, we are breastfeeding on demand still. I'm just literally feeding her whenever, wherever, whatever. If she fed only half an hour ago and she wants more, then I give it to her. If it's been three hours since her last feed, then that's fine. I'll feed her when she's ready. Um, and I didn't do that with Roman. With Roman, it was literally every three hours I was feeding him. It was a very strict schedule and it was wonderful. But with Mila, she's a different baby and that's just not what she wants. She... She's, um, she likes a lot of comfort and a lot of cuddles and um, so she just feeds sometimes very, very regularly and sometimes she can go a long stretch about it and you know what, I'm completely okay with that. If she wants cuddles all day then I just give them to her because she's just my squishy little baby and I just want to squeeze her and I just love her to bits and I'm completely happy to be just smothering her with cuddles and kisses all day so I'm happy to be breastfeeding on demand no matter what. Um, I stopped using, I did have a breastfeeding app that was telling me the duration between feeds. Um, I have stopped using that now because now I feel like I can t uh, remember which breast I'm up to because before I was having a lot of trouble remembering um, but now that you know I'm just kind of doing whenever, wherever, whatever um, I have now ditched the app, it has been so useful and I will definitely let you, let you guys know what app that was because I don't actually remember what it's called, I have to go back and look and I'll do that in a vlog, I'm going to be doing a whole video on supplies that I use for breastfeeding and my breastfeeding tips and all, all about breastfeeding basically so I'll put that in there when I film that um, and at the moment her new thing is that she is drooling everywhere, like drool, like frothing at the mouth like she is just drooling so bad so I'm gonna have to start putting her into some bibs um I don't really know whether it's teething or whether she's just got extra saliva or whether she's just like oh drool let's just make some more I don't know I really don't know I think maybe that she's probably a little too young for teething I know babies can start teething at three months old but I I just don't know I mean she is chewing on her fish she doesn't know can't use her thumb because she's always like this. Um, her hand castings are like this as well. So um, she can't suck on her thumb. She puts her whole fist in her mouth. Sometimes she puts two whole fists in her mouth. Um, which is just insane. Um, yeah, so she's not a big fan of the dummy. But she absolutely loves to suck on her whole fist. So perhaps there's um, some movement going on under her gums. But, you know, I guess I won't know until... They actually come up, but baby teeth, they can go up and down, up and down for months before they actually come through and stay through. Okay, so me, um, it says I'm no longer on a diet because my milk supply dropped. Um, I was having a lot of anxiousness and just feeling really crappy, but that's fine now. Um, and the last thing is that I just really feel like I need a date night with my husband. You know, like Martin and I have just been all guns blazing, you know, the past three years since having Roman and now Mila, I think it's probably time that we had a bit of a, a date. Oh, pardon me. That was a very delicious lunch I had and that just made me burp. Um, yeah, I just feel like we need some husband and wife time, you know, just alone, going to a movie and some dinner or something. It just, yeah, I just feel like we need some alone time. We do get alone time and we have been out together but it's been really social and I think it's probably time we had just me and him. No friends, no family, no just just Martin and I and I think I think it's probably time for that and I'm really craving a bit of that one on one time with him. So we'll be hoping to do something um, with each other really soon. That, all I've got to do is my baby buys. I've only got a couple of things to show you. But um, some vlogs that are coming up is I've done a... Um, newborn must-haves vlog, I'll be doing a breastfeeding vlog and um, I'll also be doing my frequently asked questions vlog. My most frequently asked questions is, are you trying to conceive right now? Do you want another baby? And so, I swear, it's like at least three times a day I get asked those two questions. Are you wanting another baby? Are you trying to conceive? When are you trying to conceive? What are you going to do? You're going to do treatment. Um, <laughs> so I have to do a vlog about that. Um, I'll do that at a separate time because it's it's probably worth having its own vlog I think because there's a lot a lot to talk about when it comes to trying to conceive um, a third baby whether or not we're going to and what we're going to do about it because we have no more money for IVF so 
that'll be a good vlog for you guys to watch but anyway onto the baby buys I'm not sure if I've shown you this or not but I got this cute little hair bow thing I actually when I was buying it I thought it was a headband but it's not um it's actually just an alligator clip so that I can tell is going to be gorgeous in Mila's hair when she actually has some she's getting a bit of fuzz and I think I think think she might be gonna have the curly hair I think she might have curly hair because she's got it all down here it's flat um, and then up here she's got these really long strands and they're all really frizzy and curly and it just I'm just like oh my gosh I'm so excited can you imagine my little Mila with this gorgeous curly hair I cannot wait because um, Roman got the straight hair and my husband has full-on tight ringlets so one of our kids one of them surely has to have curly hair and I think it's going to be Mila so this is going to look gorgeous but until then I'm just going to have to attach this to a headband to put it in her hair um the other thing I got is this beautiful dress I'm not sure if I've shown you already sorry if I have um I got it from Pumpkin Patch it was on sale for $15 which is really cheap considering its original price was $45 and I got it for $15 I love pumpkin patch clothes. Um, and the very last thing I have to show you, I'm going to make Camila a pillowcase dress. If you don't know what a pillowcase dress is, either Google it or go on to um, Pinterest. There are lots of pillowcase dress design on Pinterest. So basically it's going to be a dress um, and this is going to be like all scrunched up there and it's going to go around and it's going to be a cute little bow there. And then on the bottom it's going to have white like a ruffle bit down the down the bottom there so red white ruffle down the bottom and then this gorgeous navy blue bow to hold it around her neck so that's all a very long vlog from me but that's two weeks worth of information and I talked a lot about my glasses and why I had glasses and I also talked a lot about my dogs and not a lot about Mila <laughs> I'm sorry but these are not these are not just Mila and me vlogs these are like Roman me Martin our dogs a whole life you know in just one vlog so they might end up being long and you might have some short ones but hey that's just how it is okay guys thanks for watching and i'll see you in my next vlog whenever that may be bye